All right, good morning. We're gonna get we're gonna get started. It's a joy to be together. Um, I think it's really important that we recognize that we are one body. Um, so just to keep in mind, we have two, three spaces actually. Ace, that's a little loud, buddy. Can you turn the pulpit mic down? So we have three spaces going on. We have people uh, joining us online, um, either on Facebook or YouTube. Hopefully, Lord willing, they're working. We also have a space in the fellowship hall that is um, that people are joining us, and we have this space as well. So it's a joy to be together in worship, to be united in Christ, to be one in the Spirit. I'll just remind you on our Facebook or on our website, fbcbarharbor.com, you can find like this week's bulletin and check that out. Um, and also that there will be the songs of praise. You can click on a little link there and, uh, and see the songs of praise. So a little reminder, it is helpful to RSVP, and we pray that this becomes a challenge in the future, that we have so many folks wanting to join uh, in person that we have to sort out what the Lord would have us to do next. Um, and one other thing, by way of announcements, you can start to be in prayer about uh, this Halloween outreach that is happening, Ledge Lawn is uh, going to be taking place this week, this this year. I don't know if it, ledge lawn is a proper term, but Halloween on ledge lawn. Um, we will be doing things a little bit differently. Uh, we'll have, um, I think we're going to just hand out some juice boxes and be a presence, be a light, be a beacon to the community. Um, typically, there's 900, 800, 900 folks that walk down the street on a Halloween night. And uh, I don't know how it'll look this year, but we are going to be ready for whatever the Lord brings. We'll probably set up a little differently. So I encourage you, I say this by way of asking for prayer, that we would be a beacon of hope and light. Um, but also, if you're interested in serving in some fashion, it will be probably different than in years past. We, we're not doing hot chocolate, so that it'll just have like a little different feel. Um, but there will be still ways that we can serve and to have a smile on our face. So um, we're going to kind of, this might be a little tricky, especially for you online. You're going to hear it, but you won't necessarily see it. We're going to try to have folks in the other room participate in the service as well as in this space. So they'll, they'll um, like in this case, Sarah's going to open us in prayer and read Psalm 107, 1 to 9. So Lord willing, we can hear it. We're working out technology bugs and we'll go from there. Is this echoing? I just need to or is this okay? Okay. It's just echoing in my brain, I think. So, all right. Sarah, would you open yeah. us in prayer, please? Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you for this morning. God, thank you for the breath of life that you gave us in our lungs today, God. Thank you that we are free to worship you, free to gather, God, free to open your word today. God, would you open our hearts as well, God? May the message uh, Adrian has prepared fall on soft and rich hearts, God, that are ready to receive your word today, Lord. May the different parts of our service today, may communion be a sweet, sweet blessing to us, God, today as we take part of something together, Lord, that we haven't had for several months. God, thank you so much, my brothers and sisters. Thank you that we are one God, one body because there's one spirit, God, that unites us. Thank you for being present in this room, in the next room, and even online, God. Thank you that there's no, no walls, no box, God, that you can fit in, but that you are everywhere all the time, Lord, and we praise you for that. We thank you for this, this church body that you put here, God, on Ledgelon so many years ago. May we continue to grow in our love for you and our love for each other, God. In Jesus' name, amen. A reading from Psalms 107. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak out. Tell others he has redeemed you from your enemies. For he has gathered the exiles from many lands, from east and west, from north and south. Some wandered in the wilderness, lost and homeless. Hungry and thirsty, they nearly died. Lord, help me, they cried in their trouble, and he rescued them from their distress. He led them straight to safety, to a city where they could live. 
Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he has done for them. For he satisfies the thirsty and he fills the hungry with good things. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures. Here below, praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. As Tim comes to uh, help us through a time of prayer, and hopefully Sarah's willing to relay any prayer requests in that in the fellowship hall, it would be wonderful. Um, just thought we could share some praises. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Any praises that you have on your heart or mind this morning that you'd like to share, I'll try to relay them through the microphone so people online can hear as well. Anything? Yes. Just a wonderful service for my grandmother last Sunday. Um, it was a beautiful day, and the gospel was shared, and she is in glory with Jesus, and I have great hope in that. Mm. Amanda is praising the Lord that for her grandmother's um, service last week and that the gospel was shared. It was a beautiful day and uh, many people heard the, the truth and just praising the Lord for that. Anything else? Sarah, if you have one in there, you might just need to speak over me. Any praises or prayer when Tim comes up to pray? Will do. Well, that's not very praisy. Come on, guys. <laughs> I feel like that should be a new term. We Let's got get one crazy. over here. Okay, go for it, Sarah. Please, one. thank you. Catherine Whew. Shaw praises God for his love and faithfulness. Praise the Lord. Praisy, that should be a new term, I think. Let's get our praisy on. <laughs> I'm feeling it. We got another one over here. Oh, yeah. Competition going on. Yeah, bring it, guys. <laughs> what you got, Amanda? We'll wait for it. Just a second, Amanda. Yeah, Amanda Dyer is praising God that they're back in school with their children, that they've got to see them every day and work with them every day. And praise God. It's good. Praise the Lord. We have one over here. Amanda. So the praises uh, for the help that Amanda has received recently and also that a protection order came in place so that she doesn't have to worry any longer. So we're praising the Lord. Lord, we're doing that. Thank God. We got another one over here. Fine. Yes? Oh, there. Sarah's got to hear it and then relay it. This is, this is you can all be thinking of your things. Well, I, I know they can hear us, but let's beat them out. I'm just kidding. Yeah, Amanda Dyer is praising God for babies who have been born over this spring and who are healthy and growing and speaking, making noises, um, and praying for those who are still in the womb and do over the next couple of months and just for that, that joy that it's brought to us. Amen. Okay, now we got some movement here. Let's hear them. Let's hear them. Come on, guys. Go, on. <laughs> Go ahead, Mary. Cool. 
a tremendous praise for the beauty of God's creation and waking up and seeing the glory all around us. It's hard not to rejoice in his goodness and his grace. Rena. Uh, I was going to say, just walking in the sanctuary and seeing the things, <laughs> almost normal. <laughs> praise the Lord. Uh, Rena said, walking in the sanctuary and just seeing things moving towards more of normal and uh, excited to see how God is working. Judy. Mm, praise and to see how God works in situations um, that aren't what we expect for our mm. um, It's been a real eye opener. Mm. Um, praise the Lord. So the praise is seeing the way that God is at work, the progress, the moving forward, and um, just kind of how it's unexpected, like how we would never have maybe written it on a, a piece of paper, like this is our plan, but God's plan is bigger. Is that okay? Did I say that okay, Judy? I kind of changed the words a little bit, but all right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So um, in conjunction with Amanda, which I had my first before she said that, is um, we are expecting another grandchild. Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, so just share that. Isaac and I, as they are getting ready to be parents, and the baby, that she will continue to be healthy. And cool. Also, yes. Um, I just want to praise God for my businesses being, um, being good. Right praise now. the Lord. Because there's mm. so many people who are struggling, and um, that even though it's not always been easy, that he has provided. Mm, praise the Lord. So we have a couple of praises from Christina. One is she's uh, praising the Lord for a future grandchild who's coming in February, I believe, to Naya and Isaac, right? Yes, and um, we're just rejoicing in that and praising God for that. She's needing a little baby thing, blanket thing, um, and looking forward to that coming time. And also she's thankful that the Lord has um, made it so her business has sustained throughout this time. So. Cool. Yes. It's just One so more. good to see faces that we haven't seen in a long time. So Amanda is rejoicing to see folks that we haven't seen for a while. So we praise God for that. It's great to be together. Sweet. We got yeah. one more over here. Okay, because we are beating you right now. I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. You just wait. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, Clementine over here is thankful that her uncle Donald, who's been in the hospital over the weekend, is feeling better and on the mend. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Sweet. Did you have one more, Mary? Okay. And then I'm going to invite Tim to come down and pray, lead us in prayer. Yeah. Because now we're getting our crazy two on, and this is getting crazy. So. Oh, cool. Okay. So the praise is that Marion and Carter's daughter is, uh, they were able to go visit her and that she is feeling better. I get that impression and praise the Lord for that and just continue prayer. She's in a, a hot spot, I guess you could say. So. Okay, one more over here. Yeah, and then Tim is, then you and Tim will work together on prayer requests. All so. right, cool. <laughs> Amanda Dyer is just praising God that her son Corey was able to come home finally from Boston. Now I take over. Good morning, everybody. In this time, oh, in that other room. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Uh, I would like to, uh, before we go to the Lord, that great honor of going to the Lord, I'd like to um, see if there's any prayer requests. Amanda. Um, Wait, glasses. Um, so, Tom Savage, um, 
died this past week, and they're having a memorial today, and um, they're just a lot of family and friends who are um, devastated, and wife, three daughters, and um, just really praying for them to have peace and hope in Jesus at this time. Good. Don't forget a short reiteration. And yes, uh, Tom Savage is having his memorial today, and the prayers would be that God's peace would touch them, that they would see that it doesn't have to be the end. It's not the end. Um, very important, I think, in our prayers. Thank you. Anyone else? We got some over here, Tim. Oh, good. Hit Catherine? it. Catherine, do you have Oh, same thing, Tom Savage's family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we have one more, two, three. Um, I'm praying for my father, Jack, who um, is uh, uh, probably uh, towards the very end. Mm -hmm. Stage five Parkinson's. And, mm -hmm. and my sister, who's caring for mm -hmm. So pray for Jury's father, Jack, who is towards the end stage, stage five, probably of Parkinson's. Um, and for her sister who is caring for him right now. We have another one. Uh, yeah, um, we've gotten to know of Barbara and Carl, who are visiting us here mm -hmm. sometimes. And Barbara's had an onset, sudden onset of some pain. Mm -hmm. And they haven't quite figured out what it is yet. So they would figure it out and she would get some relief. Okay, so for, um, Barbara and Carl, who have been visiting us um, all summer, really, um, Barbara's had a sudden onset of some pain. They're not sure what it is. So just prayer that they can diagnose that and that she'd find some relief from her pain. Thank you. Anyone else in here? Or anywhere? We've reached a stage of awkward silence. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn to the Lord in prayer. Holy Father, we praise your name. You who are Lord God over all. You have ignited the stars. You have, you have set the planet spinning. It is your creation, your universe. You're in complete control. There's not one rogue atom in the universe. You know all. And Lord, we praise you for that. We praise you. We know that you, you bring people up. You bring them down. You raise up nations and you bring them down. You are setting everything the way it should be, Lord Father, the way you would want it to go. And we praise you because you who is in charge, you who are doing all these things, you still know us individually. You even know the very hairs on a head, Lord. You know the minute details. We praise you. Because we live in a time, Lord, and in a place sometimes where there's, there's just fear all around, worry, nervous, Lord Father. We, we Sometimes we feel we're not protected, Lord, but we know that you care and that you love. And so first and foremost, Lord, we pray that your will would be done in our lives. Your will, which is noble and good and right, as opposed to ours, which degrades. Touch us in this, Lord Father. Again, your will always be done. And Lord, I pray, and I'll pray for myself, and I'll leave it for everyone online in the other room here to, to do it for themselves. But Lord, I would pray that you would forgive me for all my sins, that you would cleanse me, that, my, that this prayer would be the prayer of a righteous man, not my own righteousness, but yours. Lord Father, we turn in this, and we, and we pray, Lord, we do pray for the Tom Savage Memorial, but we know that the family is devastated with a, with a great grief, Lord, a grief that just pumps through the whole body, pumps from the heart, horrible. We pray that you would touch them, that you would bring out of this a message to them that you are a loving God who, who cares, who's there to comfort, there to make things right. I pray that you would bring your peace on them. I also pray for Jerry's dad, who's been in my prayers for a long time, that you'd bring Jack, even at this late time, Lord, you'd bring him salvation. Open up his heart to the message as he comes through um, his Parkinson's, Lord. But also that you'd be with her sister. Bring her peace too, Lord, and um, bless her as she, as she watches after her dad. I pray for Barbara and Carl, Lord. You'd bring, um, bring pain relief. 
to them, Lord, to, to uh, Barbara. Lord, we know that you're a God who does heal. And so we just trust you in that and bring that before you and, and pray for that healing. Lord, but I would also pray for all our unsaved loved ones. So many on my list, so many with, with, uh, of concern of, of people who, who just want their, their relatives saved. Yeah, I think of my own dad, Lord. I, I, I think of my sister, Lord. I, I think so many that I would offer up to you in prayer. And, and of course, it would be for us to offer that up too. But we pray that you would touch. We know that no one comes to know you unless you bring them back from the spiritual dead. So we pray that you would touch them. Also pray that uh, you would be with Adrian today as he, as he brings the message. Touch our hearts with it. May it be a life-changing message where we would all draw closer to you. And it wouldn't just stay here confined to this room or to the other room, Lord, but it would go out on the internet, not just a few computers, but many would see it. I pray also, Lord, that you would um, bring revival in that way. Bring revival to this place in our hearts, certainly, but also in our body of believers, also in this town, in our culture. May the, may the light of Jesus Christ shine bright from this place. There are many who have gone from us, many who, who, don't come, who won't be coming back, Lord. And I just pray that you would fill this place with people who need to hear you. And wherever anyone is, that they would go, they would worship you in spirit and in truth. I praise you, Lord, Father, that you always love and that you always care and you always forgive. Bless us this day in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Tim and Sarah, for your help in there uh, and leading us in prayer. We're going to spend some time in Ephesians ver chapter 1, verse 7 to 10, if you want to pop that open. If you don't have a Bible and you want to go to our website, fbcbarharbor.com, and you click on Sunday, it'll drop down with the different scriptures that you can uh, see there as well. Dennis Rainey tells a powerful story of Gene Red Irwin. So his nickname is Red, so I'll just call him Red. On a bombing mission, Red's plane led the way to the target, and his job was to drop phosphorus, phosphorus smoke bombs down a small chute. And after dropping, they were intended to ignite. So after they left the chute and out into the atmosphere, they would create a trail for the other planes to follow. This wasn't Red's first journey, so he knew what he was doing, and he did it well. Without warning, one of the smoke bombs exploded in the chute and shot back up into the plane. Within moments, the plane filled with smoke, and the phosphorus burned at 1,300 degrees, 1,300 degrees. The burning substance began to make its way to burn its way through the metal to the real bombs that were held below the, the um, where they were. The situation seemed hopeless. But was it? Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word, for the truth that's in it. I pray this morning as we spend a few minutes taking a look at it, that you would be glorified, uh, that you would capture our hearts and our minds and uh, remind us of your goodness, your grace, and your love. Lord, I pray that you would erase me from the equation and that it would be what you have for, our, for us to hear today, that it would draw us to you. And, uh, and as I think Sarah prayed earlier, that we would have softened hearts to your word. We praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name, people said, amen. Children of God, adopted and loved by the eternal, perfect creator and sustainer of life. In Christ, we are his children. Now, if you memorize my message from last week, you'll recognize that. I'm sure no one, none of us did, including myself. Uh, we belong to a family, a family that is united together in Christ. And as we spend time in today's scripture, be sure to keep that powerful truth solidified in our minds, that we would keep that in our minds. 
If you recall, verses 4 to 14 amplify the thoughts that we read about in verse 3. So if you want to like go back to verse 3 and be reminded, you can do that at another time. But these thoughts in 4 to 14 continue Paul's portion of the letter that is an avalanche of praise because of what God has done through Christ on our behalf. Our passage today powerfully reminds us of the incredible gifts we've been given through Christ. Gifts of redemption, forgiveness, grace, wisdom, and insight. If you're able, I want to invite you to, to stand. We didn't do this earlier, but to stand for the reading of Ephesians 1, 7 to 10. So as we read God's word, I invite you to stand. So, you don't, I mean, obviously you don't have to do what I say, but you're invited to. This is God's word from the ESV. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 7 through 10. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. You may be seated. I kind of jokingly say we could probably just read the scripture and let it settle in. And I just encourage you this morning to let that settle in. Do you ever read something and just and you just have to take a moment? You you like don't have a choice. It kind of sets you back and it's like sometimes it's confusing, but sometimes it's just deep and you just can't run away from it. I want to encourage us to take that moment this morning. If you have your Bible open, you're welcome to reread those verses. If you don't, you can just ponder what you've just heard. I probably should have warned you before I, I did that so you could listen more intently. But if you don't have your Bible, you can just ponder it. Let it settle in and allow the Holy Spirit of God to speak. So let's just take a moment of kind of quiet reflection on that, that, those verses. And then we'll continue with the message for this morning. As we consider the amazing plan of God, our Father, we are drawn to the concept of redemption. Verse 7 says, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace. The Greek word translated redemption means a releasing effect, a releasing effect by payment or ran of ransom. Commentator William MacDonald helps us to clarify our understanding of redemption, he says this describes that aspect of the work of Christ by which we are freed from the bondage and guilt of sin and introduced into a life of liberty. I think that's important enough to, to reread that one statement. We are freed from the bondage of guilt and sin and introduced into a life of liberty. The Lord Jesus is the redeemer. We are the redeemed. His blood is the ransom price. Nothing less would do. That is the Apostle Paul's point. But why do we need this redemption? It's an honest question to ask. Perhaps you've even asked it. What is the big deal? Things seem to be okay in my life. Why confuse the matter? To be honest, I'd rather not think about it. Maybe you've been there. Maybe you've thought that. Through our, the, through our understanding, we may think that we're doing just fine. Remember, this is our understanding. We might think we're doing just fine and overall not that bad. Or perhaps just doing better than the person next to me. As long as that's the case, it's all good. 
Unfortunately, or the reality is that every human being is in great need of rescuing. So why don't you just look around and kind of like nod your head if, if you agree with that. Every human is in great need of rescuing. So like acknowledge the person next to you. You don't have to go over them and smack them upside the head or anything. You just like we all need rescuing, okay? That is our natural state. We are held hostage, slaves to sin. Stop glaring at people, okay? <laughs> slaves to sin, and there is a great debt owed to God because of our deep rebellion and brokenness. The threat of brokenness stems all the way to the early days in the Garden of Eden. And you can read about it in the first few chapters of the book of Genesis. God created all things. And after creating humans, male and female, he declared that it was, anyone know the answer to this? What did he declare? It was very good, wonderful. There was a beautiful communion, a true fellowship between God and his creation. Adam and Eve were welcome to eat and enjoy all the fruits of the garden, but God said they must not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We could almost tell what was going to happen, even if we didn't already, hadn't already read the scripture, right? Don't eat of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Sure enough, in time, the serpent came, and this is why Asen and I don't care for serpents, I think, but he came and tempted Eve, questioning and twisting God's words and enticing him to taste, or enticing her to taste the forbidden fruit. Both Adam and Eve gave in to their desires and ate, causing their eyes to be open to their nakedness, breaking their communion with God, becoming afraid of the Lord, and hiding from the wrong they knew they had done. Have you ever had to, ever hidden because you knew you did something wrong and you're like, I don't really want to be caught doing this? hidden. Sin had entered the world and it came and, it, and with it came death. In 1 Corinthians 15, 21 teaches all of humanity was infected. From that point onward, creation and humanity were forced to deal with the brokenness and separation from the Lord. And this explains the origin of our commonly held and most fundamental problem. And it's known as the fall of man. God, God's word communicates clearly the journey of generation upon generation, people painfully seeking, searching to be made whole, desiring redemption from their fallen, fallen state. Like if you read any of the Bible, it's this generation, generation, trying to be made whole. Let's be honest. This, this sounds pretty terrible, right? I mean, this is like, oh, Woohoo! Great day, Adrian. Thanks for bringing us here. It sounds hopeless. Sounds miserable, right? And it was. It was terrible. It was hopeless. It was miserable. But God had a plan. But God had a plan. A marvelous plan. A plan for redemption. A price had to be paid for our sin. Romans 6.23 tells us, for the wages of sin is death. And Hebrews 9.22 says, without shedding, the shedding of blood, there was no forgiveness of sin. God's plan was beyond, it's like mind-blowing, beyond comprehension. For only a perfect sacrifice would perfectly cover the debt that was owed. The NLT, verse 7 says, he is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. So rich. So this, like, what was terrible, horrible news? Beautiful, wonderful news, really, because of what Jesus has done. On the cross, Jesus became the sacrifice of the sin, for our sin. He paid the price for our sin debt with his own blood so that we can be forgiven, free from the present power and eternal consequences of sin. God, so rich in mercy, so rich in kindness, knowing the plan all along, called the people to himself and provided a way for them to know him. Romans 5 from the message says, now that we are set right with God by means of this sacrificial death, the consummate 
which means made complete blood sacrifice, there was no longer a question of being at odds with God in any way. No longer a question of being at odds with God in any way. If, when we were at our worst, we were put on friendly terms with God by the sacrificial death of his son, now that we're at our best, just think of how our lives will expand and deepen by means of his resurrection life. Now that we have actually received this amazing friendship with God. Do you ever think of it that way? Amazing friendship with God. We are no longer content to simply say it in plodding prose. We sing and shout our praises to God through Jesus, the Messiah. Maybe you're familiar with Fanny Crosby's hymn, Redeemed. It eloquently proclaims, redeemed, how I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through his infinite mercy, his child and forever I am. Followers of Jesus, we have been adopted into the family of God. And the highest cost for our rescuing was paid through Christ on the cross. Jesus, the son of God, was willing to come and to walk among this earth. He lived a sinless death, taught truths of the father and willingly gave of his life. His death, his shed blood paid the price we owed even as he breathed his last, he proclaimed. Anyone know what one of his last words was on the cross? It is finished. To tell us die. I saw Tim whispering it back there. Can you spell it, Tim? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. To tell us die. Let's try it. Let's try it all together. Ready? One, two, three. To tell us die. It's a tricky word. It does mean to be finished. So this is what Spurgeon said, C.H. Spurgeon. An ocean of meaning in a drop of language, a mere drop. It, it would have needed all, of the, all the other words that were ever spoken or ever can be spoken to explain one word. It is, all the, it is altogether immeasurable. It is high. I cannot attain it. It is deep. I cannot fathom it. It is finished. The most charming note in all of Calvary's music. The fire has passed upon the lamb. He was born, he has borne the whole of the wrath that was due his people. This is the royal dish of the feast of love. If you don't like poetry, maybe that's hard to gather all that, but this is the royal dish of the feast of love. How beautiful. The gifts of redemption, forgiveness, and grace have not just been given, but they've been lavished upon us, just poured out overflowing. This lavishing, this outpouring of love is an incredible plan of God our Father. Because of Jesus' willingness to give himself on the cross, we have life and we have the forgiveness of sin. I wanted to do this. I don't know if you've ever had a big bill that you owed someone, you know, and you, you paid it in full, like finally paid off your college tuition. Maybe some of you are still doing that. But I don't think you always get this privilege, but like if you go to the town office and you pay a bill, what do they do? They like, they like stamp it. I love that sound of that stamp. It's like, it's covered. It's been paid in full. That's what Jesus' finished work on the cross. It is finished, paid in full. So when you hear that noise, remember what Christ has done. R. Kent Hughes explains total forgiveness is something to celebrate. It's beyond anything positive thinking, therapy, or hypnosis can provide. It is complete. It's extending to the conscious and unconscious sins of our lives. Because God knows all things, and because Jesus' blood is infinite. 1 John 1 reminds us, if we claim to be without sin... We deceive, oh, I think I lost them in the other room. Sorry, guys. Hold on. I love technology. There's, there's too much involved in this. You're, I'm coming. I'm trying. They can hear me. They just can't see me. I don't know how long that's. Maybe they don't. Maybe they shut me off. That's what's happened. I see. I'm working on it. Uh, let's see. We good? No, it shows that you're good. No, it's black. Oh, is the TV turned off? Yeah. There, yay. I don't even know what they're cheering to see me. This is. 
Where were those cheers when we talked about the forgiveness of God being infinite and complete? Come on, we need to step this up a notch, all right? You're cheering to see a bald old man with the funny chin hairs. And I'm wearing shorts for you online. You can't see, but that's just beyond the First John 1, 8 to 2. First John 1. If we, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word has no place in our lives. My dear children, I, I love that phrase, my dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. What amazing grace. Incredible gift. <laughs> you win in there. Nice job. They're cheering for you online. They're cheering next door. Yes, good job. Hardly believable beyond comprehension. We should have that attitude, shouldn't we? We should have a celebration of cheering. On our website, you'll find a saying that declares, and, and maybe you've not gone there for a long time, but it says, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, God's grace is greater, and he has an amazing plan for your life. No matter, what, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, God's grace is greater. And he has an amazing plan for your life. Do you believe that today? Charles Hodge communicates when God gives according to the riches of his grace, he gives from unlimited treasure house. Unlimited. Grace is unmerited favor and overflowing abundance of unmerited love. Inexhaustible in God and freely accessible through Christ. He gives from his unlimited treasure house of love. Verses eight to 10 says, he has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. God has revealed to us his mysterious will regarding Christ, which is to fulfill his own good plan. And this is the plan. At the right time, he will bring everything under Everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. God's plan has been revealed to us, and in this we rejoice. For we were lost, broken, captive, unable to save ourselves or respond in any way, dead in our transgressions and sins. But Jesus' life, death, and resurrection has provided the necessary remedy. In his death on the cross, the necessary payment for our sin. I'm going to do that noise again because I like it. Paid in full to tell us that. <laughs> in his resurrection, the assurance that this payment on our behalf was accepted, where Adam and Eve failed, Christ succeeded. Praise the Lord, right? Where Adam and Eve failed, Christ succeeded. Praise the Lord. And now, as Richard Koking puts it, we are redeemed, liberated from the miserable captivity in which we once languished. We are now free to think outside the box of worldly culture with the ideas of God in scripture. We are freed from the deceptive lies of Satan, from the liberating tr with the liberating truth of God. We are free to resist the temptations of our flesh by the power of the Holy Spirit. We're free to become the people we were created to be made in the image of Christ. This is a big deal. And just how has this powerful truth of God's incredible grace impacted our lives? Are we living like the redeemed, forgiven, adopted children of God? You can ask this question of yourself. Just how has this powerful truth of God's incredible grace impacted my life? Am I living like a redeemed, forgiven, adopted child of God? So perhaps today the Holy Spirit is tugging at your heart and your mind, alerting you that you have gone your own way and that you are in desperate need 
of God's amazing grace. I encourage you to surrender and make Jesus your Lord and Savior, if that's the case for you. Perhaps today the Holy Spirit has reminded you of the truth that you have responded, that you responded to many years ago, yet the completeness of his sacrifice on the cross for the payment of sins has drifted from your mind. And you've begun to lean and trust in your own strength, your own understanding, your own deeds, rather than what Christ has done on the cross, forgetting that he, that only in Christ are we redeemed. And I pray that the spirit would renew within us a joy in what Christ has done. Perhaps today, and Tim has prayed already for loved ones who may not have responded yet to the truth. And we can pray that the Holy Spirit is at work And maybe the Spirit has put someone on your heart today, a family member, a friend, a neighbor, who he's already working. John and I were talking about this a little bit this morning. The Spirit is already at work in them, and he may be calling you just to reach out and say, have you recognized that Christ has paid on your behalf the debt that you owed, purchased our freedom with blood? Red Irwin found himself on that smoke-filled plane with only one real option, to pick up that burning 1,300-degree smoke bomb in his right hand and carry it to the cockpit and throw it out an open window. The journey to that window was a painful one and a destructive one on Red's body. His hand burned as he walked. And when he blindly ran in, the the cabin was filled with smoke. And when he blindly ran into the navigator's table, he had to put the fireball under his arm and use both hands to move, to fold up the table, to continue his journey forward. After finally throwing it out the window, he collapsed in a heap. What could have ended in disaster ended up red saving the life of all those on that plane that day, including his own. He did live. But for months, his body continued to burn because the phosphorus moved into his body. And he spent the rest of his life dealing with the intense repercussions of that day. In an even more powerful display of humility and love, Jesus, on our behalf, was willing to give himself. Leaving his rightful place in heaven to walk among us, to suffer a brutal crucifixion and separation from the Father so that we might have life. Because of his great sacrifice, all things on heaven and earth have been united with Christ. As we share in communion today, we remember Jesus' sacrifice, his shed blood, his broken body, willingly done on our behalf, for our redemption and forgiveness. A tremendous act of grace on our behalf of the people who truly do not deserve such kindness. Yet in Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we have been made right with God so that we too might share in eternal life through Christ. As we receive the bread and the cup today, we'll hear a new song uh, that Amanda has written, inspired by the Spirit. It's called Unity, United. United. You can find the lyrics on the website if you're interested. Um, I think. Maybe I didn't put them there, but I will work on that if they're not there. <laughs> and we'll sing it in a few days ahead. In the, in the days ahead, we'll, we'll try it out also. This song is a celebration of our unity in Christ through his sacrifice. So as Asim plays, and or after I pray, Asim will play the song and... Um, The elements will be delivered to you. Uh, Tim and um, I believe Michael over there will will share those. But in a minute, because I forgot a whole page of notes here. So the lyrics are available if you click on the online, if that helps you follow along. So let's first of all um, pray. And then I have a few more thoughts and then we'll hear the song. And uh, it is different today. And I'll explain it to you because it is a little adventurous. Um, These are individualized cups. They will hand it to you um, with their cleaned hands or gloved up hands. 
Um, and I'll explain before we take it how to, because there's like a little clear piece here. I don't know if you can see there. So you can pull that first and that's the wafer. Don't pull it all at once because you will find that you have grape juice upon you. So that would be, you know, hopefully doesn't happen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this privilege that we have to remember, to rejoice, and to celebrate your goodness and grace. Your cross, uh, while it sounds treacherous and terrible, is also a reminder of your unfathomable love, your willingness to go to places that were painful and separated you from the Father so that we might have life, so that we might rejoice in who you are, so that we might celebrate and have freedom from our sins. I encourage my brothers and sisters today that we would reflect on and confess our sins, seek your forgiveness, seek your grace, and trust that you will provide it as only you are able. Thank you for this opportunity to be unified as we take of the communion, and I pray that it would uh, just be a powerful reminder of our unity in Christ, in Jesus' name, amen. Can you imagine Jesus and his followers in the upper room? Have you ever really stopped and thought about what that must have looked like? Gathered together, sharing the Passover feast, commemorating how the Lord had rescued the Israelites, the firstborn children, generations before in Egypt through the sacrifice of a lamb, through the blood that was shed and placed over the doors of the homes to protect those in the home from the angel of death that would cause grief throughout Egypt. It was a foreshadowing of the Messiah to come, Jesus himself, the perfect spotless lamb who would give his life to the, those, to give his life to redeem those who trust and surrender to him. Today, we join in remembering, rejoicing, and celebrating what Jesus has done on the cross. During the following song, it's, which I've already mentioned, uh, the deacons, will, or um, Mike and Tim will come and distribute, and they'll actually hand you the, the cup so you don't have to, and so others aren't touching the tray. And I pray that as you listen to this song, it would be a reminder of the unity that we have in Christ. Can you press play, Sam, please? We were chosen before the world began. God adopted us into his family. According to his purpose, he brought us to himself. The mystery of Jesus for his glory. Everything together for his glory. We were dying, living in our sin on the enemy's team. With everybody else Refused our creator We wanted our own way The way that leads to death Yes, our way only leads us to death but God so rich in mercy, in love he showed us the way. The way was given through Jesus on the cross. If we join him in death, we're united in life, united in Jesus' is love. If we join him in death, we're united in life, united in Jesus' love. One broken body, united ours as one. His body broken, healed our brokenness. 
His broken body broke down the walls, the walls that separated, but he united us as one. We are members of one family as one house we are together his truth is foundational hell will not prevail a holy temple for the lord we're joined by christ together and God so rich in mercy in love he showed us the way the way was given through Jesus on the cross if we join him in death we're united in life united in Jesus's love if we join him in death, we're united in life, united in Jesus's love. One broken body, united ours as one. His body broken, killed our brokenness. His broken body, broke down the walls, the walls that separated, but he united us as one. One broken body united ours as one. His body broken, healed our brokenness his broken body broke down the walls the walls that separated but he united us as one jesus united us as one. Amen. So Jonathan's going to come and uh, share a scripture, but as he does that, so there's this little clear one. You pull the clear one first, just so you know. I've heard a bunch of you playing with it already, but there's a clear one, and you just pull that back, and you'll find the little wafer right there. So don't pull the purple one quite yet. We'll get to that, but if you need help, I can... Anybody need a hand? You good? Luke 22, verse 19. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for giving your body for us. Your body, the eternal body, the glorious body, the body of the Son of God, firstborn of all creation, the body that saves, the body we need, Lord. Thank you for giving it for us. Thank you in your name. Amen. Amen. Let us take the body of Jesus. Luke twenty two twenty. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Lord Jesus, we are so grateful that you've rescued us from sin, that your blood 
is washed us, is cleansed us, is covered us. And we ask that it come down and wash us and cleanse us now and then unite us in your love, unite us in communion with you and the Father. In Jesus' name, take the cup now and drink of it in remembrance of him. Amen. Praise the Lord for this privilege to remember all that Christ has done on our behalf. Now hear the benediction. Why don't we rise for the benediction together? It's from Romans 15, 5 to 6. May God, who gives his patience and encouragement, help you, help us, live in complete harmony with each other, as is fitting for followers of Christ Jesus. Then all of you, all of us, can join together in one voice, giving praise and glory to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that as we go forth this week, that we would, with one voice, echo your praises and share your goodness and grace with those around us. In your mighty name, people said. Uh, just a final note, as you leave, please do so in an orderly manner, remembering to care for one another and do your best to maintain social distancing. If you do desire to fellowship, we encourage you to do so outside as much as possible. And be sure to keep hallways and doorways free for people to exit the building. You're welcome to leave your cups where they are, and we will pick them out afterwards if you would like. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.